What's up guys, it's your boy Norkel here and if you click this video, I'm sure you're looking for tips and tricks for playing Minecraft and you may click this video because you are actually new to Minecraft and in fact, I'm actually pretty new as well. I've started Minecraft when I was um, five months ago. <laughs> I started playing Minecraft at May this year and then I kept on playing it because pretty much my community absolutely loves it. So we're here today and you know, I know that you have been very frustrated and you're just very confused at the game because it doesn't tell you anything, nothing. So if you don't have a good friend or friends to teach you how to play Minecraft, Norkla is here to be your friend and tell you how to do it. Don't worry, guys. Norkla is here in clutch for some big brain strats. All right, guys. So, okay. So tip number one that you should absolutely do. When you spawn into the world, the first thing that you need to do is punch trees. Punch all that trees. Get all that wood. Punch this freaking tree. And then the next thing that you actually need to do is to create a pickaxe. Now, once you have, you know, maybe two or three logs, what you need to do next is press a special button. And that special button is E. And when you get this oak log, drag it to this square block here and take some oak planks. And now when you have these oak planks, notice this thing right here. It shows you that you unlock new recipes. So the thing that you need to do is either press this and then look for a crafting table or you can do right click right click right click right click wabam you now have a crafting table set it down here and the next thing that you should do is make some sticks boom just do that sticks or you can find the stick here and bam now you have the sticks and now you can start crafting you can start with a pickaxe you can start and get a shovel and pretty much that's amazing. So the next tip that we'll have today is that, you know, you're off here trying to look for stuff, you know, trying to, trying to grind for materials and blah, blah, blah. But all of a sudden, it turns into night. And what I've noticed other people doing is they get really panicky. They'll go and run. Oh no, let's get all the dirt. We need all the dirt. We need all the dirt. Because guys, if you did not know, and if you've played Minecraft before, you'll know that mobs spawn at night. And if you haven't played it before, now you know that mobs spawn at night. So they spawn a couple of blocks away from you and you can try running, but you will find mobs all around you. So the first thing that people try to do, oh my gosh, let's make, um, let's make a house. So they're gonna rush and make a house. And oh my gosh, I don't have blocks. And then they'll run here and then they will find a creeper and it's a oh man that's the wrong thing to do guys instead of actually trying to build a house what i would recommend is actually going down here bam 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 and digging a hole and bam protecting yourself from the elements that's the best thing to do and what you can do now is that you can just expand this you know just make sure that you expand this block here so that you have quite a bit and now that you're down here get a couple of cobblestone you know, so while you're waiting for the monsters to kind of die from the heat of the sun, you know, because that's Minecraft logic, uh, what you can do is actually get a cobblestone and make a furnace. Oh my gosh, we left the crafting table. Oh, it's all good. We have some oak, uh, we have some oak logs that we can make into oak planks and we can absolutely make a crafting table. Now set that crafting table down and click this button and search for furnace. Now you have a furnace and the furnace is what you use to cook stuff. Usually, most of the time you use coal to power furnaces, but in this case, we'll have to use a plank. And unfortunately, I don't have logs. So maybe we should step out a bit and try to look for some logs. Okay. Oh my gosh, please don't kill me. There will be creepers here. Okay, come on, we gotta punch trees. Gotta punch trees. Gotta punch trees. Let's go. Okay, punch trees. Punch trees. Good thing there's a tree here. Let's break this down. Let's break this down. Two hours later. <laughs> okay, um, now that we have that, what you should do is just cover this up. And now you can actually create. Wait for it. Wait for it. One eternity later. Wait for it. You have charcoal. Now, once you have charcoal, you can actually turn it into torches. Now, what you need for torches is basically this. Oops, it's not here yet. You do this, create some sticks, put some a stick here, 
and a piece of charcoal there and now you have a torch and now you have a little home with some illumination to wait it out one thing that i also like to add is just to create a small window like this with one just uh, one block here and uh, a one block window this way monsters can't actually go into you they can see you but they won't be able to get to you at least most monsters so you just wait there until it becomes daytime so hold on guys let me go to sleep uh good night all right so it's daytime and we're finally gonna get out ah oh, look at that fresh air uh, but let's not waste resources we're environmentalists up in here let's break this furnace let's take this crafting table and let's figure out what the next tip is so the next tip that i want to give you is that you need to find food to make sure you get stamina so if you notice there are two bars above my inventory bar so or actually quick select slots and look that's a mob if you see something green in minecraft look running for you you run away because it will do it will do something like something okay anyway let's just run away from it let's run let's run away from everyone okay these things are chasing us we cannot be we cannot we cannot let ourselves be caught so we gotta keep running let's run away and outrun all of these monsters <laughs> Okay, guys, I think we've successfully run away from the monsters already. And as you can see in the bottom left and right, actually at the bottom side of my screen, there is the heart symbols. And then there are some chicken drumsticks right there. And as you can see, I lost some hearts because as I was running away, I fell off a high place and I got damaged. And running and jumping makes you use stamina. So the left one, the hearts actually are your health bar. And the right side, the chicken wings or the chicken legs are your stamina bars what will happen guys if you run out of stamina is that you will start dying of hunger you'll start losing health and also once you get to just three drumsticks you won't be able to sprint anymore and if that happens you are going to have a big problem but don't worry norco's here to help you out so what you should actually do next guys and this is very lucky we were able to find some cows and chickens what you need to do is get some of that and uh we, if you don't have a weapon yet you it's okay you can just punch the beef punch the beef punch the beef i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry okay we gotta kill the beef no come back here oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm sorry look away vegetarians look away vegetarians look away vegetarians this is not content for you. All right. So once you kill those types of mobs, uh, the chickens, horses, <laughs> etc., you actually will get raw beef. And obviously, since it's raw, you need to cook it. And what you do to cook is you get a furnace, you put the furnace there, you put the raw beef up here, and you get planks or coal or logs to actually cook the beef. All right, so while that's cooking, let's try to get ourselves a chicken. Oh my gosh, you chicken. Okay, so we've had our first steak already and be my gosh, I love me some steaks. I don't recommend cooking steaks on furnaces, but Minecraft logic. Anyway, so when you have steak, equip it as your, in your primary hand, and then you just press right click, press and hold it to actually eat it. Now, when you eat it, you are going to get extra health. What will happen, I guess, if we just eat it raw? So we have here some raw chicken, and if you eat it, you're only going to get one drumstick. So it's very inefficient. It's better to actually cook your food and then eat it to be able to get that sweet, sweet nutrition, stamina, and health. Stamina. So now that you're all fully fed already in high chicken and ready to go, I'm sure you want to go either adventuring and building your dream house in your new brand spanking new Minecraft world. So let's get a bit more resources. So we have a tree here that's going to start punching it. Oh, darn. This is going to take forever. As you can see, it's very inefficient. Let's try to use another tool. I have a shovel here. Let's try it. Oh, my gosh. It's not working. And let's try a pickaxe then. 
Oh my gosh, it's still taking too long. And guys, that's my next tip. The fourth tip is actually to use the right tools for the right job. And there are actually a couple of tools that you will need and I will show it to you guys. Right now, we have a couple of things that we have in our inventory. It's called a wooden pickaxe, a wooden shovel. And let's try to create some more so that I can show you. The number of tools that we have here, we have quite a number of tools. Uh, we have an axe. We have uh, a sword. And we also have hose. All right, so now we have some tools here. And I will tell you when the right time to use these tools are. So shovels, you use them for things like these. You use them for dirt blocks, gravel. And if, if you think about it in real life, right? You use shovels for dirt. You don't use pickaxes for dirt. That's very inefficient. And as you can see, it works very faster. So this is a shovel. That's how long it takes. Now, if you use a pickaxe, it takes longer. Now, the pickaxe is actually for hard objects. Now, this pickaxe here, these are stone that we are mining for cobblestone. And as you can see, the pickaxe is just cutting right through it. Now, if I use a sword on it, look at how long that it will take. Have you ever seen, you know, a, a sword versus a rock? You know? Rock always wins when you when you try to fight fight rock with sword. So anyway, that's what we have. The next thing that we want to check is that actually the axes. So axes, obviously you've guessed it, they're actually for wood. So as you can see, this is really fast. We're getting a lot of wood really quickly. If I use the shovel, it takes forever. But if I use the axe, it takes quite fast. Also, the axe actually is one of the strongest, if not the strongest in terms of damage. And as you can see, if I hit this chicken, you know, I am able to hurt it as much. It has nine attack damage and interestingly it's actually stronger than the sword which is just four attack uh damage all right now the sword is actually for uh more efficient killing the special thing about s swords is that they have an area of effect and you can actually swing them much much faster than axes so that's when you actually should use them so if you have multiple mobs or monsters running at you you can use your sword to defend yourself now when it comes to hoe what you can do is that right click, etc., to be able to create, you know, land that you can farm on. Another use for the hoe is actually to create uh, new dirt blocks, but that's a pretty advanced concept for now. We're going to skip that. Oh, and by the way, there are different levels of quality of tools. So right now I have a wooden shovel here and then a stone axe. Now the progression of the quality of the tools is from wood to stone to iron, to gold, but I wouldn't recommend gold is you get an upgrade in stats, but less durability. Just like in real life, gold is highly conductive. However, it's not very durable. Diamond and netherite. So that's the progression that you want to go forward. Personally, just use stone tools to make your initial pickaxe and then dig down and get yourself some cobblestone to make your stone tools. All right, so you've done a bit of adventuring and now the sun is about to set. Oh my gosh, it's going to be dangerous. You're now thinking of you know, digging down and creating a shelter. But wait a minute, there's another important thing that you need to use. You need to be able to use the bed to be able to skip the night. So instead of you having to dig down and wait until the night is over, you can actually skip the night and make sure that you wake up at the crack of dawn. Now for a bed, we actually need sheep. So good thing we found these sheep and now we have to actually kill these sheep. I'm sorry, sheepy. They're really cute. If you have some iron, you can create um, some, some clippers and now and you can shear the sheep instead so that you don't have to dye them they just become very naked sheep now the important thing that you need to have from the sheeps are actually uh wool so we have four wool now we need to get that crafting table we also need to have some wood planks and we have 10 right here and we need to create a bed so beds are here you now have a white bed and you can put it here and as you can see as the sun is setting you can set the bed down and sleep However, it's not late enough yet. So it will tell you that you can only sleep at night. So that's one of the things that you ha really have to know. Oh, and speaking of spawns, whenever you place down a bed and right click it, you actually turn this into your spawn point. So if you die, you will spawn here again. You'll wake up from the bed just like it was just a bad nightmare. So it's nighttime. We're going to sleep now. So good night, everyone. Top of the board! To ya. So it's now morning, guys. The sun has just risen. And now we are here for a new day of adventuring. And by the way, if you die when this bed is down and you already right-clicked it and you now set your spawn point, when you die, 
you'll be spawning there. But remember this, guys. If you remove the bed to take it with you, you're gonna lose that spawn point and you're gonna have to go back from spawn and find your items again. So as much as possible, you know, make sure you have a bed set down before you go adventuring so that when you die, you just spawn nearby. Okay, so you're now out adventuring and you know, you're preparing for the next day, gathering your resources as well as trying to explore the world around you. And hey, we found this very interesting natural cave interesting maybe we can find something else oh now here is the next thing that we are going to be doing so the next step that i'm going to be giving you is that you need to be able to use torches to prevent enemies from spawning so we've got some coal here we are going to get some more coal so instead of us having to cook the wood we can have coal pretty much immediately and you can find them in these blocks with black spots on them all right Ooh, we got them. Give me all of them goodies. All right. Two hours later. Let's say that this is now your house. This part of your place is your house. If things are too dark, what will happen is that mobs will spawn. That's how the Minecraft world works. Hostile mobs will spawn if a player is far enough and if an area is dark enough. So what you need to do is to actually create some torches especially inside your home and outside the immediate vicinity of your home to protect yourself so remember we made torches a while ago right now we have some coal so we don't need to actually take some logs to make them into charcoal so let's just do do it like this you can actually put the coal here and we don't have sticks need to make a couple of sticks what sticks here coal easy you get four torches so now we have 16 torches uh, by the way you can even make torches without a crafting table as you can see because it's very very simple now once you have torches what you need to do is that set torches around your home so that it is as illuminated as possible so nothing actually spawns inside your house that will be so bad if a creeper just spawns in your house now another suggestion that i have is that so that you when you go out of your house at night you won't see monsters pretty much immediately it would suck to open the door and you'll find zombies you should also put torches in your yard so let's say this is our yard like this is our backyard you put some torches here you know as far as you can as far as you want so that mobs will not spawn and this is a great defensive tactic to keep yourself alive and keep your home safe logic and my next tip, speaking of mobs, we need to be able to create a shield. The shield is one of the most important things that you'll need to craft here in Minecraft. So some people think that the most important thing is probably armor. And, you know, in games, we usually assume that it's armor, but it's actually the shield. So let's make a stone pickaxe and let's mine these blocks, these brownish looking blocks, these uh, brown beige looking blocks. These are called iron blocks. And what they drop are actually iron ore. So you can get these. Let's take all of these out from this section. And perfect. How many ores did we get? We got eight. All right, that's good enough. Oops, sorry, I dropped my uh, pickaxe. What? You can't actually craft anything from iron. So remember, uh, if we were gonna make any tools, you're gonna have to put the stick here and then you're gonna put do that. As you can see, it's still not usable. Here's the thing, you need to smelt them. Just like in real life, blacksmiths actually liquefy metal by superheating them so that you can use them. So what you do is you put a furnace down, right click, put the iron horror here, put the uh, fuel or coal there, and wait until you get an awesome piece of iron. All right, so let's wait. Okay, we got an iron ingot. So that's what happens when you smelt ores. Now what will happen is that you can create a shield. There is a shield. So when you make a shield, you just need one iron ingot and a couple of planks. So we don't have enough planks. So we're going to make some planks. We're going to take that and we're going to make a shield. Ta-da! We now have a shield. Now press escape, then press E, your inventory. Put your shield here and ta-da, you now have a shield. To be able to use a shield, you right click. To be able to use your tool, you left click. So do that, do this. Oh no, we've gone into the cave. 
And we're seeing all of these monsters. We've seen his. And what the beautiful thing about the shield is that as long as it's not an explosion, and when mobs try to hit you, if you're you're holding your shield up, it's not gonna hurt you. If you have armor, it's still gonna hurt you. So you just have to keep your shield up and just, you know, alternate between holding your shields up and also hitting with your weapon. Oh my gosh, let's run away. That's called a creeper. Those things explode. Let's see what happens if we have a shield on. Perfect. As you can see, the, sh the creeper did any barely did any damage to us. As long as you have your shield up, you are going to be generally safe. Now, the problem though is that if people, if you get mobbed from front and back, then you're going to have a big problem. So shields can only protect you in one direction. If someone flanks you or a mob gets behind you, then you might actually die. And now that we have a shield and we have some pretty cool weapons, let's start exploring caves. So the proper way to explore caves is that first of all, you need to make a, a bed maybe somewhere near the cave or outside in the cave make that your respawn point so that when you die you you are spawned right in the vicinity you don't have to go tra travel 1000 blocks to find your cave and the next thing i'd strongly 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 recommend is to make a lot of torches okay make a lot of torches try to make as much torches as you can because you won't know how big the actual cave is the next thing that you need to do is bring some food what might happen is that if you don't have enough food and if your stamina bar reaches to three and you have so many mobs chasing after you you're not going to be able to run away because you can't sprint so make sure you have food and that's pretty much the basics that you need to have Again, let's repeat, you need to have a shield, you need to have a weapon, you need to have your proper tools like your pickaxe and shovel, you need to have torches and food. So let's go in here. So we're exploring the cave, exploring the cave, and one thing that you really need to do, the most important thing that you need to do when you're putting caves is put torches just on one side the reason for this is it will make it easier for you to find your way back so if you put all your torches going into the cave on your left it means that to go out of the cave you just need to go use uh you, need, you just just need you need to make sure that you walk in the direction where your torches are on your right so that's a very useful thing to actually do now let's get some of these iron. Let's try to get some armor. Spending the day in the mine. We also need some iron ore. Hey, uh, oh my gosh, we're getting a lot of these things. Okay, so we have some more coal and we have some more wood blocks. I think this cave is pretty big. Let's create, oh my gosh. Where, what happened? So that's something that you need to be aware of as well. You need to make sure that you're not being attacked. And when you do craft things, make sure that you craft them at a safe place. So let's make some more torches because it seems like it's a very, very enormous cave. As usual, we need some sticks. Let's make some more sticks and make some torches. We currently have five coal. So we now have 33 torches. Let's keep exploring, guys. So we're going to go down here. This is where we got exploded on a while ago. Which side should I take a look at? I think this is the safer side. So we're going to go on this side first. Oh my gosh. We found something really cool. When you see something with wood inside a cave under the ground, it usually means that it's a minecraft. It actually, I think it mostly means that it's a mine shaft. Now, mine shafts are very risky places. There are things called spawners in there, which are blocks that spawn mobs uh, if there's no not enough light around it. So these are this is a dangerous place to actually go inside. So let's not go into that mine shaft yet. Let's just explore the rest of the cave and see if we can get some more resources. We just ran out of coal, so we're gonna get some more coal. The green things that you're seeing are actually experience points. If you're a beginner, they won't matter to you as much. But once you get into the world of Minecraft, 
you're gonna need them for enchanting and you're not gonna want to waste them and if you die you pretty much lose your experience if you have more than let's say 10 experience levels like the number uh, in the middle bottom middle of the screen that's my current level if you're above 10 points and you die and then you come back to get your items you're only gonna be stuck with seven points so before we forget let's put some more torches on our left here so don't we, we don't get lost Ooh, some more iron. Let's get some more iron. Oh, and this is a very interesting thing as well. Make sure that you're not on water or like uh, like um, a big part of your body submerged in water because it will slow your um, ability to mine or or break blocks. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I think... I think we've got enough stuff for this video. Mine shafts are pretty hard to do, so I don't want to risk it yet. I'm a beginner. So let's just follow these torches on my right to find our exit and try to find other things and explore the rest of our world. Okay, this is on our left, so that means that's going deeper. I have to keep the torches on my right. All right, the torch on my right. Torch on my right. Okay, I see that this is my home. Okay, let's put the torch there so that we just don't get confused. And there you go. We are back in our home. It's apparently nighttime, so we're going to take a rest so that when we go out, it is a pretty nice day. Now, what I usually like to do is just leave the torches just to make sure that when I come back or accidentally come back to this place, I uh, know that I've explored the place. All right, so let's break camp. Let's take all of our stuff. And let's start going out into the world. Now, once you start going out into the world and really go far and start exploring the world and you've built a house, there is an important concept that you need to master, which is using the coordinates. Now, I'm sure you've heard of it. Sometimes when you play with your Minecraft friends or in a server, they're going to ask you, what, what are your chords? What are your chords? And chords are basically just a shortcut of coordinates. And the way that you can find your coordinates are if you're in Java version, you have to press F3 and there is a piece of text here that says XYZ. Uh, it's actually this one. Make we'll, I'll make sure that we zoom it. So XYZ. Now XYZ and the numbers behind it are your X coordinates, Y coordinates and Z. So if you know math, you know the Cartesian plane, you know, it's a 3D graph. So that's where math is very important. So the first number, the negative 7.9, that is my X coordinate. The second number, the 68, that's my Y coordinate, meaning how high or how low I am. And now the last number, which is negative 543, is our Z coordinate. Now, best practices for this is that if you want to make sure that you don't get lost, take down the coordinates, write it down somewhere or put it in a, in, in, in a notepad or Evernote or whatever note taking thing that you use so that when you get lost, you can just actually try to find the direction that you need to so for example if my coordinates are actually zero 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 i need to move in the direction where all both numbers my x and z numbers are actually decreasing so i can get to zero oops so i got to zero x so now i have to continue on the direction that really that that minimizes the change in my x minimizes the change in my x it's called a breakup <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're on bedrock, the coordinates are shown in the upper right section of your screen. So instead of the text that you're seeing here, because I'm on Java version, usually your coordinates are, in the, are on the top left of the screen. So that's very important. So usually when people ask for your coordinates or you ask someone their coordinates, you usually tell them only the X and Z coordinates. So for example, I say, uh, I'll send you my my chords so basically i'm telling uh, my imaginary friends in the server that i'll send them my chords what you need to send them usually is the negative eight and negative five 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 so what you will do is negative eight negative five 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 you don't really need to know um send over the y the coordinate because usually you know just following the coordinates, it will show you that there's a mountain up there. So just, just just follow that naturally. And if, for example, they're in a mine, they'll tell you that they're in a mine and they'll tell you, hey, don't come here. Or I'll tell you the coordinates to the entrance of the mine and you can find me there. 
Now, finally, I do have a classic, a very classic piece of advice to you. A lot of Minecraft YouTubers and content creators and streamers will always tell you, never dig straight down. So doing this is a big, a big no-no. Okay, so that's not, proper, not the proper way of digging down. The reason for that is that you might actually end up in lava. And when you end up in lava, you're gonna most likely going to panic. And the lava, if you're not equipped for it properly, you're gonna have problems getting out of that lava pit. And since, you know, there's there's four walls um, surrounding you in your one block, you're not gonna be able to get out. So that's very, very dangerous. But instead, if you want to mine down, and if you wanna go to Y12, basically it's where it's generally accepted where, where you get mi mine diamonds. What you do is this, go one block down, Break two blocks here, then break one block down there. So three blocks, one, two, three. Now, and that's how you actually dig down five. So we're at Y555. So keep doing that until you get to the right level that you won't need to. And continue. Also, don't forget guys, also put some torches here. If you're not, if you're using certain shaders, or um, if your screen is not too bright, it's going to be pretty dark once you get uh, pretty low into the world. And, and that's going to be a pretty big problem for you. So there you have it, guys. That's my 10 tips for you to actually survive and have fun in the Minecraft world. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to get notified for more gaming content. I stream pretty much Among Us in Minecraft exclusively. So if you enjoy those games, this is the channel for you. By the way, I also stream every day on Twitch. So make sure you follow me at twitch.tv slash And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. You're the best. Let's go.